Good morning. Good morning to La Shauna. To La Bona. Shanti. To Nima. To Anita. Good morning. To Parvati. Good morning. It's a blessed morning. Um, we have so much to be thankful for. We are alive. We have beautiful weather this morning. God has been good to us. I see Diane post up a scripture this morning. She's <coughs> not with us this morning. And it's taken from Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I love that scripture this morning. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. Great is his faithfulness. Good morning, Kina. Good morning, Kurt and Katrina. Good morning, Sarita. Hope everything is going with, good with you and your family. And the children are all well. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Sheila. I'm so glad that you all could join us. Good and Katrina. Yes. Sorry, we couldn't be with you all yesterday. We really did miss. What happened yesterday? Yesterday we had an appointment. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> You see, he, he's proven that he's 62. Two. <laughs> he already forgot what we did yesterday. Because but, I, I always keep thinking about the future so much. Once yet, this, the thing about yesterday, I can't, do, on, eh? I can't do anything to change it. But I can do a lot to help mm -hmm. make a difference in the future. And that's a good statement. Eh? We can never go back to yesterday and undo yesterday. And but we can always... <laughs> do something about today well at least today we are confident that we are alive and we can do something about today Lauren Lauren good good seeing you locked on I follow you I see you you're doing well in to what you're doing to make a difference in the nation <coughs> must commend you and uh, Akina I hope that you had a good zoom meeting with the choir members yesterday I know that you had a good meeting. I just feel that I know normally you will have a good meeting. Um, <coughs> Sheila said senior moments is expected now and then. That's not a senior moment. <laughs> that is a senior moment. <laughs> Sheila, that you is... know, while we wait, <laughs> while we wait that for others. <laughs> for I other... refuse to accept <laughs> having senior moments. So while, we wait, my while we wait uh, for others to come on. A few days ago on um, Facebook, we were talking about um, what is it proper? <coughs> is it proper to to um, on WhatsApp to video chat any and anybody? Uh, what's your take on that? My take is I need to be forewarned, <laughs> and Kate, <coughs> Kate thinks he can video chat anybody anytime. What anytime? <laughs> What's your take on that while we wait for others to come up? I, I'm, I'm just say just say yes or no if you believe you can video chat <laughs> anybody anytime. If you say yes, no for sure you'll get a video chat from me. <laughs> but so be, you know, think carefully of your answer, right? But you see my hair is growing long, I'll have to get a ponytail in the back. <laughs> so imagine I didn't get time to go to the to my the person who takes care of my hair. Um I want to make a plug for all these men. She does a good old sister, Omiti. Does a good job on my hair. And um, <coughs> so, but I have no problem. No, but that's okay, you know. Nima, Nima will be glad because her husband has long hair. So she will think that you are joining him. <laughs> okay. With a ponytail in the back. Yeah. You know? <coughs> okay, Sheila said, no, you can't. And we respect everybody's yeah. point of view, eh? So it's not a wrong or right it's not answer. A trick question. It's not a trick question. And certainly I wouldn't call you it, without telling you first. It's just something I personally <laughs> believe that your video chat somebody who you know is really, 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 really close to you. But like I wouldn't <laughs> personally I wouldn't video chat Donald unless I call him and that's my son. Right, let me just say this. That I is... wouldn't video chat like Devon unless I text him and say 
Oh, you know, tell him I'm going to video chat him. All right, here it is. But uh, <coughs> any one of my sisters, anyone, I'll video chat them any day, any time. <laughs> yeah, okay. It, anyhow, different or, people have different Oh, my brothers too. I'll video Already, chat them my anytime. My brother too. <laughs> Saul is here and all is great. But the thing about it is that um, your personality will depict a lot of like that. So really is not too much of a person like to video chat. I do. Serious? I Are you prefer, all just you all just call No, <laughs> I pre I prefer to video chat, but I will not invade somebody else's okay. privacy. That's what I'm saying. But but let me tell you something about yeah. my personality. I am people's I love to talk. And when I do not have people to talk to, I really get 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 bored in. Um <laughs> Kina <laughs> said no <laughs> funny question. Okay. I just love to talk to people. <laughs> And if I yeah, don't you to, love uh, to talk to people, but you don't need to video chat. For me, I like to see people. You can, you I, can I, just have the audio. That's fine, uh, but that doesn't make it right. Uh. No, I know that. <laughs> I ain't seen everybody. I ain't seen everybody. But but for instance, if if I would ask Akina <coughs> or Lauren, if I would ask you, um, what you cook today for lunch for breakfast, and you say you did toast egg, I mean toast egg, <laughs> toast bread. <laughs> with egg and sausage and um, that all that song really good but when I ask how did it taste the only way I will know how it tastes is by your expression so when she if she said oh my if she said good but the facial expression wasn't expressing that so I like to see emotion yeah I do understand you know yeah. but that still doesn't make it right I didn't say it's right or wrong <laughs> we did not argue right or wrong but um <coughs> what we're saying is that different people are different people. Um, you see, sometimes people here yeah, is not made up nicely, yeah. or the clothes <laughs> isn't appropriate for the pastor to video chat them. I agree. Know? I agree a hundred percent. But <laughs> no, no, this one thing. I wouldn't. They call it snap. Snapshot. Snapshot. <laughs> I wouldn't snapshot <coughs> nobody <coughs> and use it on Facebook. Or, or keep it on fire, mm -hmm. so but um, it's just me. Forget oh, Diane it. said, No, you can't. I can't, you can't video chat anybody. <laughs> she said, So, okay, yeah. All so, right. if your daughter says so, no more, no more arguing. No, okay. <laughs> Trisha, good morning. Tell your daughter hi for us. Trisha, are you missing school or are you glad school clothes? Um, I know mm -hmm. a lot of school. Let me just say this teach the teaching. Uh, Teaching career is a high stress, especially with the environment that the child has to deal with. And the parent, when you deal with the child, you deal with the, deal with the parent. And then when you have the level of um, people not performing, it could frustrate your mom. So, Good morning, yeah. Diana Pumal and Nandini. Nandini, I can't wait to see your son. He's probably walking <laughs> and talking now. Send pictures for us. Send lots of pictures for us. Um, yeah. This morning I want to read over Diane's scripture again. Um, we are in church and she's at home. And she put <coughs> her scripture on message, messenger. She said in Revelation 21, 7, He that overcometh mm -hmm. shall inherit all things. And I'll be his God and he shall be my son. Um, and I want to read a scripture for us this morning before Keith Shane. I don't want to preach to you, but I want to read a scripture that was a blessing to me this morning. Good morning, Esther. Esther, what time is it in Sweden right now? <coughs> Could you t let us know what time it is? Welcome, Pastor Don Douglas. I do follow you, commend you for the good work you're doing um, in, your, in the church that you're pastoring and the organization you just meant. Pastor Don, nice, nice having you join us. In fact, I have seven things that every believer is supposed to ask God for. Um, not just ask Him, but ask Him up based upon what His promise is. So I want to share that. shouldn't take long. So this time of lockdown must be a time of asking. And in this time of lockdown, a time of asking must be a time of expectation. And it must be a time of receiving. Esther, um, Rachel did not log on this morning. So I don't know if she went for very late sea bat i know she is very very close to the ocean she is she is Rachel, enjoying racial or hannah racial she lived closer to the ocean than hannah no racial in tobago oh yes 
she's enjoying a life that some of us will dream of to get up and just you know go to the walking distance to the ocean locked down in a resort okay esther said it's 3 30 p.m um, what's that it's as they said in Sweden, 3:30 p.m. 3:30 p.m. Good morning, Joshua. <coughs> Joshua, see every day you're logging on. I think you're getting to like this um, online service. Eh? <coughs> it's so convenient. You could be in your little pajamas and with you know yamping your eye we'll and everything, and just yeah. look at the program. No showering, <coughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, Joshua. But God is good. Eh? Joshua. <laughs> Um, I hope everything you're enjoying, your 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 shatin. Yeah, we missing her, um, Rachel this morning. She's and on. Esther, Rachel. Rachel Daniel. Okay, I didn't see that she was. No, Esther is on. Esther. That's on. Esther. Yeah. Esther's on. Esther's on. Okay. Um, I just want to read this scripture before Kate share with us, um, and it's taken from Isaiah forty twenty eight to thirty one. Um, it says, "Has thou not known?" Has thou not um, heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, <coughs> and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with <coughs> wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Don't give up this morning. You know, as we were talking, I am anticipating this weekend, the Prime Minister will start opening up, a little, opening up and and um releasing people and businesses yes back. i desperately <laughs> need to see people <laughs> and um i did make a plug to the government i sent a special note to the team that handling the um the changes that churches be a, a primary in terms of opening up and, and we so already <laughs> making provision this morning we ordered a sink and we have sanitizers. Yeah. We have everything in, in place. place so that when we church <laughs> starts, um, that people will not be afraid. Uh, and we already start designating how we will see people. Six feet apart. Yes, yeah. yeah, so everybody will be comfortable. The worshippers always have the distance in yeah. already. So we, the church already have things in place. But what most likely we may have to do is the possibility of put a 11 o'clock service based on what is happening. So. Um, RWC people don't stay home when church start back. Uh, we're doing everything. You go to the supermarket to shop because you need groceries. You need not just only RWC people, but our Facebook <coughs> friends. You go to the drugstore. You go to the market. You have to go because you need certain things. Let church be a necessary part of your life. So Redemption Worship Center is a responsible church that taking every measures, putting every measures in place, measure in place because. Um, the, the, the virus is unpredictable. A lot of people don't still trying to figure out a lot of things about it scientifically, <clears throat> medically. And so we want to also take all the safeguard. And because our sanctuary is a large enough sanctuary, we can comfortable accommodate all our members with a third service, um, then um, 60 distance, and of course, family sitting together. So. I look forward as soon as the Prime Minister make, uh, make that announcement and um, the worshippers are really rehearsing already in for this coming out of this lockdown. We have some new songs, have a word from the Lord for us and um, <clears throat> I want us not to miss it. But take the opportunity to invite people to your church, invite them to not just um, come out of the lockdown but come to your church, visit it and, and you can make it your home church. All right, so don't forget, Federa, welcome our service. We have a 7 o'clock Sunday morning, a 9 o'clock, and already a contingency in place for 11 o'clock service. Um, and so we will tell people to have these three choices. Um, because we also have a large um, elderly <coughs> population and a large youth population, we're catering for the elderly. 
that we could socially distance them um, for their safety. Um, so, so let's get into. Let's just say good morning to Radhika <coughs> and to um, Rainy. Um, I did not say good morning to them. Okay. Right? And um, I can't tell Kelsey we're missing her. Give her a big, a, a virtual hug for her. <laughs> So, Jean, uh, um, thank you for really joining on. All right, let me just say these seven things that everybody should pray in this lockdown time and believe God for. But pray, it. let me just say this. Your motives for your prayer will determine the quantity of and the quality of the prayer life that you have. And it will help determine the expectation. And so let's begin by the seven things you seek God in prayer for. <clears throat> Number one. I know purity is something that is is a, is something that we. Okay <laughs> I I know um, purity is one of the things that we talk to God about. Lord, help us that we would be pure as a people, and um, that guard that area of purity in our lives. Help us to guard the area of where people will try to lure us into traps. Um, so that at the end of the day, your walk, who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? He that had a clean hand and a pure heart. So it means that the quality of life that you have before God is important for the quality of your prayer to go before God. And so I want to encourage you. We live in a time, especially the young people, they're entrapped with a secular society and let me just say, it has some good um, company believers, and it has some believers as bad companies. Yes, they, I wouldn't say they're not going to heaven and all these things, but the quality of life, because they embrace such a liberal society under peer pressure, the young people <coughs> are pressured to, to do things that they normally in their Christian walk wouldn't do. And so you need to guard your heart. Every time I would talk to a young lady, not so much the young men, because... The young lady affected more when you have a break, broken relationship. Men cut off and get it over. Average man cut off and get away quickly. But the lady, a woman carries that disappointment for a long while. And trust is something they don't, they just don't um, <clears throat> build back again. And trust is something that, um, yes, we are live streaming in church. So everybody's going to see somebody. So let's pray for purity, Matthew 5, 8. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So that purity itself must be a blessing. So you have to ask the Lord for that. Blessed are the pure in heart. So ask the Lord, help me so that I can remain pure. The second thing that we have to pray for, if you want your motives to be right in your prayer life, is his purpose. You know, last night I was sitting down reading and and talking about predestination and providence and God's plan that he had for us. And the thing about God, he don't ever force us outside of our will. And some people say, well, why God will send us in the earth if he know that we would not serve him? But of course, because God sent, he didn't make us as robot, he gave us a free will for the power of choice. But it is the power of choice also to be pure and, and live right. But the second thing, the power of choice to make God's will your priority. And I said to the Lord last night, I said, Lord, if I know exactly what your detailed plans and purpose are, I would appreciate it, knowing it, so that I could go ahead and do it. But you know, we could trust the Holy Spirit to help us day by day with that. So prayer, say, Lord, help me that I will know your purpose and fulfill that. Ephesians 1.9, it says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he has purpose in himself so god always has great plans for us but the big question is whether we are open for the plans of god but um it's something i wouldn't want to teach here i'll teach it in church is god already know what your decision is going to be because if he didn't know he wasn't going to be god <coughs> and so his eternal plan <coughs> incorporate from before time your decisions yeah so uh, you know it's like this you a twin they're born and although they look alike and everything and they may have a lot of personality like um there's one will 
put their if um put their finger in a different direction or point their fingers in different direction because the power choice to make this decision and so it is, has been my prayer daily lord help me that i will do your will ever since i was a young man at the age of 12 13 14 15 in fact <clears throat> if ever i had to get out um for had to follow with my parents <clears throat> or anybody would be and this is not bad bad fallout where you, you, you disagree to not talk this is where i would not allow people to superimpose their will and purpose on my life and allow the purpose that god has set for me to to be second in my priority so it is important though even let i mean i god give me a wife and, a, and three children and a daughter-in-law but i would never allow um to force them into the things that they don't want to do but because the track record they know that i don't make mistakes in my deliberation and my decision making I, i'm not perfect and if it's one out of a hundred i'm off i can live with that because i try hard lord help me not to make wrong decisions in my life because wrong decisions in my life have consequences on your wife your husband or your children your family members or your church and so even pastors need to be sure lord that i am not preaching because i'm called to preach but my preaching must have purpose my pastoring the flock that god has given me must have purpose in fact if you're a community pastor <coughs> that god lead you to pastor community church it means that the people in that community must be a priority you must have a purpose for them god send you if you know god send you and before you go to pastor church don't just take up a church because it's available say lord is this the place you want me to go because i had i think it's about five churches that was made available for me by my by my pastor who was the secretary at the fellowship at that time and even my bishop at that time and i said to them i wouldn't want to do it because there is availability and they needed a pastor and they felt because and the charisma the music the, the evangelistic drive that i had and the ministry anointing that i would have been a blessing but i said to them i said i just want to be in the center of god's will of that safety so it means that although i'm god sent me to shagonas <clears throat> but one of the first thing when god sent me to shagonas i said lord who are the people group you want to plant me inside of inter and then the lord told me drive down into edinburgh 500 and i drove down and i didn't realize that was like a little city edinburgh 500 is a big development that people don't see because it's kind of hiding in the side in the back there a little private place <clears throat> with thousands of, <clears throat> of homes and thousands of family and um when i knew god said to me there as the place to start i immediately walked and let me say this to you yes i, I came out from business i didn't need money i didn't ask i didn't come in ministry because i just wanted opportunity money i came shagoras because i said god send me through the prophetic utterance and through confirmation of my seniors <clears throat> and myself felt it god sent me to shagoras i literally let me just say it literally on these two feet walked every street every home i mapped it out i knew where everybody was living when they call i could tell you what street you're from and um so it meant that the purpose that God sent me for, I was, I had to ask God for the, in terms of, Lord, help me so that I can get the details for this. <clears throat> because God knows exactly who you'd want to send it to. So, uh, purpose has always been my primary prayer after his purity. And um, so the scripture for that, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. And I like that word mystery of his will, the mystery that you can't comprehend. <clears throat> You can't figure it out. You don't have the answer how to do it, but you just have to trust God that He will help you according to His good pleasure, which is purpose. And it's the number three thing you have to pray for. Now, remember the average Christian when they pray, they're asking for, Oh Lord, save me, John. Give me a spouse. Help me, Lord, that I can get a house. Help me, Lord, that I can uh, have a good car. And they have all these things on their primary prayer list. But I say, if you ask with the right motives in the right agenda and order take what i tell you, you know, this is guarantee when you begin to get your prayer perspective right you will never lack let me just say it again when you get a prayer perspective right there'll be no lack 
there'll be no worry about the, the future, how it's going to end. You will have a good life. So just notice number 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 three. Uh, more than I thought. <clears throat> number three is prayer for His presence. Lord, um, the Bible said they that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. They are the ones that sons of God are the ones that who will carry out His purpose and assignment. And so I say, Lord, help me so that I can be sensitive to Your presence. So I just don't want Your presence in worship, but I want Your presence in leading. For instance, our worshipers in church and our musicians, and if you're a preacher, you say, Lord, when I stand <clears throat> before the people to sing. I want to feel your presence and I want your presence to help minister so your presence can be felt. But you just don't want your presence to be felt when you're home and when you're ministering. You want your presence to lead you to. Because the Bible said when the children of Israel left Egypt, guess what happened? A pillar of fire in by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And the Bible said whenever that pillar came down, wherever it stopped, they will stop and they will pitch that tent and offer sacrifice. So it means that in our life daily, we have to say, Lord, I need your presence to be encouraged. I need your presence also to be led. And, and so it says here in Exodus 33, 14, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. That rest is that comfort, that peace, that assurance that you know the enemy can't attack. All these things, are, um, the provision will be there. So God will not lead you into a place that you will be destroyed. Of course, he will lead you into a place where you will destroy the enemy. So sometimes you see challenges coming and some battles. And God leading you there. Go in with joy. The fourth thing that you're praying for, I hope you're taking notes. One of the things that Valine stand out for me in church, she's one of the youths. And why I say stand out? Because every time I finish preach a message, she could come back and she would write all these notes. And write it down. Because when you hear it, you write it and you begin to speak it. It makes a difference in your life. So don't just say, I'm hearing a good word. Listening that good word, writing down that good word, speaking that good word will help you to, word will help you to live that word. So play, a lot of people say, I'm in church, but they're not living according to the word of God. So again, we say, you pray for his purity, Matthew 5, 8, if you're writing. Pray for his purpose, Ephesians 1, 9. Number three, you pray for his presence, Exodus 3, 14. The fourth thing we pray for is his power and remember <clears throat> we start the motives right we start purity we start purpose we start presence now we, we need to see the manifestation of his presence um, ministering his power and so you know the bible said i, I give unto you power and when he sent the 70 he give them power the 12 he give them power after when after during before the ascension he called he calls and he give the power to all of us as christians in John 1 12 John 1 12 this is what he says but as many as received him to them to them give he power to become sons of God even to them that believe on his name that word power is is is, um, is the authority to speak and the manifestation of that authority but <coughs> the dunamis that comes after the dynamite the powder keg the explosive present the power to, to manifest and the power, the authority to declare. Let me just say this. If you don't have the authority, the power which is the authority to declare, don't expect a manifestation. Because the Bible said we have the power to speak, and whatever we say will come to pass. So that is, the, you pray for his power. Number five, uh, after praying for his power, you need to pray for his protection. Because with power, the devil wouldn't leave you standing there without attacking you. So you need to know that I need to be protected by God. Lord, your Holy Spirit will protect me and your angels are there to protect me. I have no doubt in my mind from the evidence that I have seen in my lifetime that God had sent angels to protect me. So, <clears throat> you know, there is a song saying, I am not alone, I am not alone. Yes, we sing that with the understanding of his presence. But in church here, yeah, I sing it with understanding more than just the presence of the Holy Spirit, but the presence of the angels. And Ephesians 6, 11, it says, Put on the whole arm of God <clears throat> that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And so it means God has given us the armor which is to protect. That is five. Number six, you pray for his peace. His peace. Well, Lord, in the midst of all that, I just want to have a peace. You're going to bear this coronavirus, everybody dying around you. Give me that peace. 
everybody losing the job give me that peace and uh, philippians 4 7 pray for that peace and the peace of god which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through jesus christ so you would not be flustered you would not go through anxiety i mean it does come sometime <clears throat> the reality i do have these things confronting me sometimes and a lot of times but i learned to get in and lord give me peace in the midst of that when i don't know what is going to happen lord give me the peace because you know the end result and john fourteen twenty seven, he said peace peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you <clears throat> not as the world giveth give i unto you he said let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid so i guess during this time we need to pray for peace and finally um pray for wisdom <clears throat> now the seventh one is wisdom remember i didn't ask to pray for the needs I didn't ask to pray for your healing. I didn't ask to pray for um, all these other things because Jesus said, all these things, I know what you have need of. So don't worry. If you get these three, seven right, God will provide the rest. Because number seven, why pray for wisdom? Because God never take a fool and bless him. A fool, any man will, fool, will come and deceive them and take what they have. <clears throat> you know, it's one thing for God to bless you, but it's the next thing for the bank and the institution, for people to come and just borrow, ask you for an abuse and take everything that, that you have. Whenever God <laughs> give us resources, he give us the power to, number one, use it right. Secondly, give us the power to preserve it. I always say to the people in church, don't spend all the money I get them. Please. I mean, people don't like to hear this. I'm not preaching that the church going after time because redemption worship center i have not made any announcement that that we need your tithe i've not made any announcement of course the tithe belong to this house and our people are taught well and so they don't know where the tithe because the church as an institution and we didn't get no check from no government at least as yet you know if we don't get this is 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 take, take money i receive it and we bless people but the midst, midst of it oh god has been good to redemption worship center and so that we do take care of our people. We, we provide both streets for those from our congregation and even those who we know that come forward and, and need help with the resources that we have. So we do provide. We are a church that reach any need. So when you give to your local church, you help. In fact, you get blessed because this is your church that helping people. And by the virtue of you giving there and your church helping people, the blessing come to you. <clears throat> but you need to have wisdom. After getting what God gave you, give God what belongs to God you had to know how to use at least a percentage of that at least 20 percent of that if you could put it in a saving or, or, or an investment that bill in equity or even 30 percent of that you're good and so it means that you have enough money to, to save to service yourself and to invest three things the three S's you save <clears throat> the first thing after doing a budget God must give you wisdom to save. I beg you people, if it's a hundred dollar a day, a dollar a day, teach your young children, Sherry, teach the young ones how to save. <clears throat> Don't let them spend all what they have. From at the age of 10, 11, 12, open my little bank account and put them with us. They earn it. <clears throat> and they'll grow up feeling good that they have a saving. So you need to put your saving after following God with his substance. You're saving first. Secondly, you need to calculate what it will cost for me to, to live. You take care of your groceries, your, your, your cell bill, and, and, and don't, don't just have a cell for cell's sake. If you're not using more than average, take a good package, you have some cheap packages. So you, you, you watch your budget and you say, what it will take for me to live, Incl inclusive of paying my car bill and my house bill, my, my house mortgage, and all these set of bills. And the third part is that you save your service, and the third part is you invest. And so you must have something invested in. A house is an investment because it will be equity. And so ask God for wisdom in these things. And if you don't have wisdom, pray, pray for that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the understanding of having wisdom tonight. And I'm closing with James 1, 1, 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So he didn't say, Rodi, you're automatically born and you get wisdom. He said, ask of God. So that must be a prayer request. I ask every day, Lord, how do I spend your funds in church? How do I spend the resources you have given me? I want wisdom <clears throat> to apply that. And um, so ask, lack wisdom, let him ask of God. 
and listen what God says and he give it to all men liberally and abrid it not and it shall be given unto him so I want you to know that these seven things ask God for as we pray that you believe God for it purity purpose presence power protection peace and wisdom Father, I pray that you will allow your church to focus on what our prayer ought to be like. And as we pray for these five things, Lord, and I thank God for the Sean, Lord, having put it up there that, that people can be blessed with it. That we pray, we pray with these scriptures, that you, you will honor your word and give us according to as you purpose in your heart. Lord, help us today that our prayer will be powerful. It will be effective, and Lord, it will impact the kingdom of God. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That was a good way this morning. I want to say good morning to Laker. Thanks for joining us. And for Dolly Singh in Manhattan. I pray that all is well with you, and you are keeping yourself very protected, you and your family. We continue to pray for you. Every time I look out and I see your apartment, I remember you and I whisper a word of prayer for you. So I want to encourage you all, no matter how the situation is, also. continue to <coughs> trust in God. Um, you, know, you know, those words are, it's enough to keep us for today. Fresh a lifetime. Ma fresh manner today, fresh manner tomorrow, <laughs> right. fresh manner each day. So I want you to log on with us tomorrow. Just just remember, Carla Richard Kamabash. Yeah. I didn't need to keep on, but thank God for you. Um, Fidela Douglas. Um, yeah, I want you Mike and Heather Van from the U.S. always praying for us. Yeah. Mike, Heather, we really thank God for your prayer. Valley, I call your name on the program, so make sure you hear what I call it for. Curtis Balchon and, um, and many others that didn't put a note. But I know that you're looking on at this program. Yeah, I want to encourage you to love one tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be dealing on love and marriage again. Oh, it's interesting. And it's a very interesting topic. And we try to do it on a Friday because love and marriage. we know everybody is so relaxed. <laughs> and, you know, the setting of the mood is a little bit more different, more relaxed and everything. So love one tomorrow. You don't know what you'll miss if you don't love one. But last week, you Friday, you shed on, on, on love, right? Yes. But yeah. I would encourage people to go back to last week, Friday one. Listen to it and then we'll pick up there because it's interesting to, we don't want to repeat what's said. So go back. Um, Gladly, I told you and Brian to listen to it. it. It's really good, just for information. So go back and listen to Friday, uh, what will you shed on love? Very interesting. You'll hear a yeah. lot of story. Sarita, <laughs> it will be it will be nice for you also to listen at it. Listen to it, sorry, because in the last week message I had some points for single men and women. And yeah. So it's good to look at it and And she talked about how we met. Um Pastor Wayne Moore would like to know the reference for wisdom. <coughs> the, so reference, to your note and, um, the reference for wisdom. Uh, yeah, and on Sunday, I'll be speaking to the mothers. So I want you to the Sean, you log can put on. Right. The, I want the reference for wisdom. wisdom. That's your last, um, your last, last your last point. Uh, right. I have so much of points here. It's like, this piece of wisdom. Right James 1 5. <clears throat> That's the more. James 1 5. So, Sean, I know you have it. It's purity. Matthew 5. She has all, all, but that's the only one. Uh, wisdom, yeah. James 1 5. Right, Pastor so Wade Moore from Canada, our good friend. We asked him and his wife to come and visit us in Trinidad. We have a room there for you. Always your room. You have been the one that came to us many years ago. Yeah. More than, we know him for 40 years. 40 41. 41. Yeah. And then when we started the church, he was the first one that came and preached. A real tremendous passing. He call it. We plan to visit him soon. We want to come when it's really cold, cold. The Eskimos up there. Pastor Wayne, I know you have two children who is probably dating. So they too can listen to that um, love and marriage um, session that we shared on Friday. So why Pastor Wayne can't listen to it too? It go help. Because yeah. I'm not sure if it have any spark in. <laughs> yes, come tell with more Pastor Wayne, more tell her that, that we old people no, can still No, I spark. meant, I don't know if my message 
Uh -huh. had anything that will trigger a spark. I think you did. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't mean it what you thought I meant. Oh. Yeah, you know, if I ask and pass away and more to look at that, I want to make sure that it has something that, you know, we get them excited. But, you know, invite your mothers, your grandmothers, your lady friend, and everybody to listen to Sunday's program. I'm very excited to be sharing. I've been praying. What is the uh... Yeah, I've been praying. I might cry a little because I know I'm very emotional this weekend that I'm not going to see my church family, but we have to do what we have to do. So I want you all to, you know, just log on. But, but you know the whole church membership crying also. Yeah, I know. I know they're crying. They're not, they're <laughs> but not I'm the, not seeing their face. But I've seen it in the expression, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but we then. want to say thanks to you all for listening. Thanks for logging in and sharing your time with us. And do have a very pleasant Don't miss day. tonight's message for 7 p.m. And it's, it's going to follow up from this. Bye. God bless you all. <clears throat>